Lord, you're so good. We honor you, our Father and our King. We celebrate you in the house, your house. For Jesus' house, for all nations, Saskatoon, is your house. And we are your children. Thank you for an outpouring of grace upon our life. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our king. Thank you for being our defense, our rock. Thank you for being our vengeance. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you for who you are to us. You are the God that created the heavens and the earth. You are the God who never fails. Thank you for fighting our battles for us. Thank you for healing our mortal body. Thank you for being our provider. Oh Lord, indeed you are good. Words are not enough to express our gratitude. But nonetheless, we have come to say thank you. We have come to say thank you. Jehovah, we honor you. And we bow everything that makes us who we are. We bow it at your feet, Lord. We give you alone all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that there is an outpouring of your mighty presence and grace upon our life today. So that we will never go back home the way we came. We will be better. We will be greater and greater in you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. I want to celebrate the grace of God in the house today. The fact that you are here today tells me that God is faithful. God is gracious. Let me quickly start from the fact that as a church, we are full of gratitude. For the 36.81 acres or 37 acres that the Lord gave us last week. We are not ungrateful because it can only be God right in the half and the city of Saskatoon. And I share the story how just two young men who just have a heart to know more of God who just have a heart to want to please the Lord, just started to pray together. And the Lord in his infinite mercy has never failed. Then when it was just two, he said to us, he said, the glory of this later house shall surpass that of the former. And he has not stopped doing what he has promised he will do. And so the theme for this month is the glory of this later house shall be greater than that of the former, said the Lord of hosts. Agai chapter 2 and in verse 9. And in verse 9. And in this place will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. The question you want to ask is what is glory? What is is glory. Simply put for me, I don't care what the Western Dictionary call it. I don't care what the Oxford Dictionary call it. I don't care what anybody define glory to be. But simply to me, glory means the abiding presence of God in my life. Glory means the abiding presence of God. Glory means, again, the abiding presence of God. And the small topic or small heading we're giving to the message this morning is created to impact my world. Created to impact my world. May I tell you, you see, and that's why even as we appreciate the Lord for the gift of the land, we do not glory in the land. We do not glory in the land. And I will explain quickly. If you are familiar with what is going on in England, 
you will realize that there are big cathedrals and big edifices that are now being taken over by the Muslims. Not only by the Muslims, that are now being taken over by pub houses. And it's happening all over the world. Those cathedrals and edifices were there. They got to the level they got to because the presence of God was with them. Until suddenly it got into the head of man that you can do without God. And when it got into the head of man that they can do without God, they started compromising what God hates and bringing it into the church, into the, into the sanctuary. And the Spirit of God has said he would not struggle with any man. So the Spirit of God departed. And what we see today is the shadow of what was because the glory has departed. May the glory of God not depart from your home. May the glory of God not depart from your life. May the glory of God not depart from your health. If you are a carrier of God's glory, you will never have a better yesterday. Every day will be better than yesterday. Let me quickly say this. The Lord made it clear in the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians in chapter 15, in chapter 15, from verse 41, there are a set of glories. It said there is a glory of the sun. There is a glory of the sun. So the sun has a glory. There is a glory of the moon. The moon has a glory. And there is a glory of the star. The star has a glory. So inanimate objects have glory. But the truth is, they do not have the glory of their own. The sun only reflects what God shares with them. The moon only reflects what God shares with them. And the star only reflects what God shared with them. On their own, they are nothing but the creature of God. So, if the sun wants to seize, all it needs to do is tell God, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Then you will realize that the mighty sun will become a carcass. If the moon wants to cease to be in existence, all he needs to do is to say, God, I want to do this by my own. Then you, are, you realize that the moon will be a worse version of itself because they do not have a glory of their own, but they reflect the glory of God. So also, in the first garden, the first tabernacle of old, Exodus in chapter 40, Exodus in chapter 40 from verse 34, it said about what happened. It said, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. The tent itself is not the glory. The tent is just a carcass, a space of accommodation. It said, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. As at that time, we hear so much about what God was able to do because they allowed God in their midst. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle and God answered their prayer and God made them a terror to every other nation. It is not them. It is God, the hope of glory. God in me, the hope of glory. You see, when a man want to become ex, ex-relevant, ex-popular, he will say, let God go and sit down. I can do it myself. When a man, when a marriage want to lost, lose his relevance. The husband and the wife will say, well, I can do it by my own. And before you know it, that marriage is gone. 
and that's what you're seeing all over. A marriage that is Christ-centered will remain relevant. Oil will never dry. The love will never, their love will never cease. By the grace of God, I've been married for 22 years, 23 years. And it was as if it was yesterday because our love kept growing. Why? Because we both have Christ that we are looking unto. But when the man brings his ego, I, me and myself, the priest of the home, you will lose relevance. When a, man be, when a woman begins to say, don't you know I'm the woman of the house, you have already lost relevance. But when we all bring everything we are to the subjection of the Lord, when we all bow to the authority of the word of God, and we allow the word of God to reign in our own, our love will be renewed. That is glory. No man carries any glory except what God reflects through you. When a man puts his hope in his certificate, when a man puts his hope in his experience, that man will soon become irrelevant. Because what gives that certificate a substance is the fact that God is at the center of it. So don't forget, the quickest way to lose relevance is to tell God, go and do your own. I know how to handle myself. And God never struggled with any man. So the Bible says in the book of Agai, Agai chapter 2 in verse 9, he said, the glory of this later house, that means what you are seeing now is nothing compared to where God is taking you if you will allow God. The glory you think you are seeing now is nothing compared. You see, when the church brought us from two, two people to two families, to two to ten families, the easiest way to die is to say, God, we have arrived. And before you know it, it will have been stolen that there was once a church and a people called Jesus House for All Nations. I've seen churches like that that lost their relevance because the man who the Lord wants to shine his glory through decided to be the God of the church. And he lost his relevance. Brethren, he said, God said, the glory of this later house shall surpass that of the former. That tells me that where God is taking us, you have not seen anything. Those of us who came for the pastor's prayer vigil, we were just celebrating 36, 36 37 acres. And God said, that is nothing compared to the next thing that is coming. And he has already showed us. And we just begin to say, God, how, how, how you have not seen anything in Jesus' house. As long as Jesus is the center of thee, as long as Jesus is the center of thee, the least you can ever be is what you are now. If you make Jesus the center of your finance, the least you will ever be is what you are now. If you make Jesus the center of your marriage, the least you will ever experience is what you are now. If you make Jesus the center of your home, the least you, have, you are experiencing is what you have now. Why? I know very sure. Because the Bible made it clear. It said, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it come into the imagination of man that which God has proposed for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. And I know my beginning may be little, 
but my later end will be great. I have experienced it, I have experienced it, and I'm still experiencing it. My lovely wife did um, a, you know, a technical thing and invited me for a talk. And she asked me to tell how divine creation started. And I said, divine creation started with a shovel that God gave me. A $14 snow shovel that God gave me. And God breathed on a $14 snow shovel. By the grace of the Most High God alone, I have a first degree, Ife. Second degree, Ibadan. Third degree, University of Saskatchewan. But God gave me a $14 snow shovel. I asked God, what will I do with this? And he said, I will breathe on this. And with this, I will feed your home. And today, if any man offered me $20 million for that business, I will say no. Because I know where God is taking me. No company can pay me what the Lord is giving me today from that business. But God is still saying, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has he come into my own imagination where he's taking me. The only condition is that he must be at the center. And that's why that business is called divine creation. Because I don't know how. I only do what he tells me to do. So brethren, now, Glory, inanimate object may have glory. But the glory that God is talking about is not in the land that God gave us. It's not in the certification we have. It's not in the mansion that we have. It's not in anything. The glory of God that we are talking about is the presence of God in our life that guarantee peace even when there is storm. That is the glory we are emphasizing, em emphasizing upon. When God shows up, everything bows to the authority of his name and his word. Everything. But darkness cannot stand the light of God. No matter what you are going through in your marriage. No matter what you are going through in your career. No matter what you are going through in your business. No matter what you are going through in the life of your, through the life of your children. No matter what you are going through in life. Ask God. Invite God into that situation. If you still think you can do it by yourself. You're only wasting your time. It does not get better. It only gets better when you submit that situation and condition to the authority of the word of God. The only glory a man has is when the Lord shines through you. That's why he's called us the light. The light of the world. We don't have any light. But God pour himself upon our life and make us the light and it shines through us. That is why we are the salt of the world. We are nothing but carcass. But when God breathed upon us, we begin to impact our world. You being blessed is nothing until you become a blessing. So the Lord said to, uh, to Abraham in, in Genesis chapter 12, he said, I will make your name great. I will bless you. But he didn't stop there. He said, I will make you a blessing. All the things you are and you have is nothing if you cannot impact your word for Jesus. It's nothing if you cannot impact your word for Jesus. The Lord made it clear he said, if any man should glory, glory in one thing, only one thing. If any man, that is if you must glory at all. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 24, which was also echoed in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 31. 
Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. said, but let him that glories, glory in this, that he knows God. If you must shine your light, let your light, let your light shine. Let people know that you are and you carry the presence of God. What is the essence of glory in eph ephemerals? I've seen people who built mansions. After a while, the mansions became empty. Grasses and wild animals took over the place. They are all over. But glory in the fact that you know God. Glory in the fact that you know God. Again, glory in the fact that you know God, that God is Lord that exercises loving kindness. The later house glory signifies that God has just started with us. He said, in Agai, I echo again, the glory of this later house shall surpass that of the former. Your tomorrow shall be greater than today. Amen. Whatever you think you are experiencing today is nothing compared to where the Lord is taking you. It's nothing compared to where the Lord is taking you. Back at home, I thought I was something until God said, leave everything. And I left everything. And I came to this land. With $469, I landed in Saskatoon. That was all that was in my hand. And God said, I will sustain you. You will never have to depend on any man. And God has been ordering my step. I came to this land with two bags. One that was filled with books, test books. And one half my clothing, half tapes. But today, if Canada asks me to go back home, they owe me a lot. Because even uh, a, 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 a plane will not be able to carry what the, the blessing. But that is not what we glory in. That is ephemeral. What we glory in is, I know I am walking in the will of God. I know God is the center of my life. I know nothing in this world will be more important than God in my life. Nothing. Not all the blessings of this world, not all the riches of this world, nothing in this world will take their place of God in my life. So, if you want to shine, shine through Christ. Anything you are going to become, become in Christ. Everything God created must reflect his glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 41 says there is a glory of the sun. But that glory is because God shined through it. There is the glory of the moon. That glory is because God shined through it. Also, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 said, But we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. He kept on describing who we are, how we glow. But he said, Don't ever forget the God that called you out of darkness and brought you into marvelous light. It is that God that brought us into the light that makes us a chosen generation, that makes us a peculiar people. Don't forget. Don't let it ever get into your head that you are something greater than who God is in you. The day you say God is no longer relevant, that's the day you start losing your relevance. The day in your marriage you say the word of God does not matter, that is the day your marriage starts going to the abyss. The day in your career you say God can hold his own, I have the experience and all, that is the day that career get into the level of degradation. You must recognize that God is the center of it all. This later house glory signifies that God just started and you have not seen anything yet. What eyes have not seen? What ears have not heard? What has not come into the imagination of man? Mind-blowing testimony will begin to show forth through you because God is in the boat in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is physical, whether it is physical or spiritual, you should never be stagnant. When God says, 
the glory of this later house shall surpass that of the former. That means God is taking you to a place that is greater than where you can imagine. There, there is no room for stagnancy. No stagnancy in your marriage. No stagnancy in your career. No stagnancy in your business. You have not... Re it, when they tell you you have raised it up, I remember somebody once told me, because I made my life, I made Christ the center of my life. He said, Gideon, you have reached the pinnacle of your career. Today, that man is a farmer. Then he was the MD, I don't want to mention, of a bank I work with. And all because they asked me to come and preach. And I preached the clear truth of the word of God right there in the bank. And I look at him in the face. I said, what you guys, all of you, the leaders of this, of this bank are doing, God said I should tell you that you should repent. Because if you do not repent, this bank will die and it will still hold all of you accountable. And there and then, I got a call. And he said, you have reached the pinnacle of your career. And I said to him, sir, thank you so much, sir. But do you know, promotion does not come from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Promotion only comes from God. And I am and I'm satisfied with Jesus. And for four years, I was never promoted. But for those four years, they kept moving me. Every year that they are supposed to promote me, they will move me from one department to another department. I said, I be, they want to make me the face of the bank. And they will move me again from one. And when it pleases the Lord, the Lord took me away from that bank before the bank crashed. And that person that said, I have reached the pinnacle of my career is now a farmer tilling the ground now. Brethren, if you don't want to be ex-relevant, make sure that glory that God promised, which is himself, his presence, cannot depart from your life. It cannot depart from your home. It cannot depart from your tabernacle. The physical is good, but the spiritual is better. The physical is good, but the spiritual is better. When God says he will shine his glory through us, yes, he will continue to bless us in physical blessing so that we can be a blessing to our immediate circle of influence. But the spiritual blessing is far greater because we have a home where we all hope to be. Having a hope, eternal glory, should be the primary influencer of every believer's action. I don't think I will, can, I will ever or can ever take any decision again in my life without thinking of where I will spend my eternity. As a man, when you, your ego gets into your head and you decide to lay your hand upon your wife, remember eternal glory. With that action, get the approval of God. As a woman, when your ego gets into your head and you decide to punish your husband, remember, with that action, takes the approval of God because eternity beckons on every one of us. Eternity beckons on every one of us. And you must have eternity with Jesus in view. Because in, if only in this world we have hope in Christ, then we are of all men most miserable. If your Jesus can only reflect through you in this world and cannot carry you to eternal glory, then you are of all men most miserable. You are of all men most miserable. Jesus must reflect through us in this life. And in eternity, Jesus should still be the anchor of our heart. Praise the Lord. Joseph was born and blessed with clothes of many color. color. But do you know Joseph did not glory in the clothes of many color because they are ephemerals. Because when the coat of many color was taken away, Joseph was still very relevant. When he was thrown in the prison, the coat of in the in the pit, the coat of many color had been taken away, but the presence of God was with him. When he was sold as a slave, the coat of many color has been taken away, but the Bible says, and the presence of God was with Joseph. He said, and God blessed the house of Potiphar because of Joseph. Not because of the coat of many color. But because of the presence of God. So he became a carrier of Jesus. He became a carrier of God's presence everywhere he went. So it was better 
that where he was yesterday, he was, in, he, he was in the pit. Then he became a slave. Then when he was in prison, the presence of God was with him. Until he fulfilled God's purpose, until he impacted his world, you will impact your world. Nothing will stop it. Challenges of life will not stop it. In the name of Jesus. Health situation will not stop it. You will impact your generation for Christ. Joseph was born and blessed with clothes of many colors. A shared experience of glory in the ephemera. But because it does not glory in those ephemera, when those things was taken away, it does not really matter. Because you can take the certificate of a man, but the knowledge inside that man you cannot take. No, you cannot take it. Joseph carried the presence of God. Your being blessed profited no man, nor does it profit heaven, until you become a blessing to your world. Now quickly, whose glory do you reflect? We have established the fact that there is glory, and the glory is the presence of God. But I must also tell you that there is glory which the devil gives to those who have accepted him, who allow him to use them. Part of those glory is when a man or a woman start loving what God hates. You are accepting the alternative of Satan. When you begin to talk about divorce, God said, I hate divorce. And you know it's not about you. You know for sure that God instituted marriage for a purpose. But everything that God instituted, the devil wants to destroy. It is not about you. Don't let your ego think you are that important. It is the battle of the gods. God created marriage. But the devil has come and said, I will destroy everything that God created. The devil cannot create anything. He is only after God. And how can he torture God and destroy what God created if not for those who will allow him, the devil to walk through them? So you think it is about you. It's not about you. It's the battle of the gods. You only yielded yourself a vessel. So in the house of God, there are vessels of honor and there are also vessels of dishonor. You will not be a vessel of dishonor in Jesus' name. What is that glory? That glory is the presence of God. I remember very well we were in a place. We were worshiping. And suddenly, because we preached against what God hates, I said, look, you cannot say you are a Christian, you are a child of God, and you say you are a lesbian and you are a gay. And the owner of the property gave us two weeks to leave. Two weeks to leave. He said what we are preaching is against his principle. And we had no choice. Two weeks. But on the last day, the last Sunday that we said we will just close until we get a place, the Lord God showed up. The Lord God showed up. And he gave us a place from where we move into our own tabernacle. God will never fail. Those whose eyes stayed on him. God will never fail. Those whose eyes stayed on him. Whose glory do you reflect? The glory of God? Or the glory of I, me, and myself? Or the glory of the devil? May we not reflect the glory of the devil in Jesus' name. My son prayed, ministered last week, and that ministration, I still carry it today in my soul. In the book of Psalm, Psalm 114, Psalm 114, it talks about when Israel left Egypt, left the hand of bondage, and they choose to make God. He said, when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from the people of strange land, in verse 2, he said Judah was the sanctuary. Judah decided enough is enough. This bondage, this, this pure evil is enough. We will give our life to God as a sanctuary. Judah was his sanctuary. And Israel became his dominion. Then situations and challenges of life begin to skid. 
Mountains begin to skid. Rivers begin to part. Why? Because there is God in their midst. Can you rise up with me this morning? Can you rise up with me this morning? The glory we reflect is the glory of God. For us to continue to be relevant as a child of God, Christ must be at the center of it. But if you are there and you don't have a relationship with God, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. If you are there and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are missing. And very soon, whatever the devil has given unto you will disappoint you. Because the Yorubas will say, Satan will say, Satan will give you $10, but he will take a million dollars from you. He will give, even give you a million dollars, but he will take your health, so that you don't have the health to enjoy the million dollars. That is what Satan does. And if you don't want this, you better run to the cross. You better run to the cross. Run to Jesus. If you are there and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you want to rededicate your life, this is an opportunity. Don't let it go by. And you just want to pray and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. 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 I'm tired of living for myself. I'm tired of embracing the opinion of men. Oh Lord, I submit everything I am or will ever be at the authority of your word and at the authority of your name. Come into my marriage. Come into my career. Come into my business. Come into my health. Lord, do it, O oh Lord. Reign through me. Shine through me. Reflect your glory through me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And as a church, can we pray? Lord, make me your sanctuary. Lord, reflect your glory through me. I release everything to you, Lord. I bow everything at the authority of your word and your name. Help me, Lord. Father, we, we release Jesus' house, your, church, your house. We are not contending with you, Lord. Shine through your church. You have said we are the arrowhead of the revival in this city and this nation. Lord, we are praying. Use us fully to the glory of your name. Shine through us as individuals. Shine through us as a family. Shine through us as a church. Reflect your glory through us. We have no glory of our own. We depend on you, Lord. We rely on you, Lord. We look unto you, Jehovah. Yeshua Messiah will look unto you. Come, O Lord, and do what only you can do. In Jesus' precious name. We pray. Amen. Brethren, make Jesus the center of your life. I plead with you by the mercy of God. Don't just be a Christian by name or by number. Let Jesus be the center of it all. For our mommies and our daddies, please don't allow the devil to use you to destroy the perfect work of God. Don't give in. Give in to God. Release yourself to God. And see how God will drive your marriage. And see how God will drive your home. And see how God will drive you. You will never be irrelevant when you bring God at the 